Welcome to Zowie Estimation Workshop, each uh, coach's training, so to speak. Uh, what I'm going to do is go through what the students would do if they were coming into the room to compete and go through uh, Station 1, Station 2, and Station 3 and just explain what's happening in each one so you'll be better prepared for how to, to work with your students and, and uh, help them practice. When the students walk in, um, they are going to be um, presented. Mike? Yeah. Mike, hold on just one moment. Can you actually come down because your face is not in the screen? So I'm going to move further back. That's perfect, right there. All right, great. Okay. When students come into the room, they're going to be uh, presented a bucket, like this one here, any other bucket, and it'll have a dry substance inside of it, not cornmeal anymore. We did that one time, it was not, not fun. We had cornmeal everywhere. But things like lima beans, uh, uh, spaghetti, alu macaroni, any kind of uh, pasta is always a good choice to practice with the uh, 100 grams. Uh, the weight of the cup, cup is not part of the 100 grams, so whatever cup I'm using, if it's a 12-ounce cup or a 24-ounce cup, uh, solo cup, or it could even be a heavier version, if you practice with that once in a while, it would be a great uh, just to try that. In case I'm using a ceramic cup, it would be hard to do that with uh, lots of teams, but it could be possible. Uh, but generally, it's going to be a solo cup, anywhere from 12 to 24 ounces. And then inside that cup will be, inside this bucket, will be a whole bunch of of macaroni or rice or lima beans or pennies or nuts and bolts, whatever. And then the students have to put into the cup 100 grams of whatever is in the bucket. Once they have given uh, myself or one of the other helpers in Zowie estimation their cup, they cannot get it back. And they can go to either station two or station three. And uh, we'll talk about that in just a second. So at station two, this is where they have a container full of objects. Lots of times it's pasta again, different sizes from orzo, very tiny, to um, some kind of a twisted pasta noodle, a bow tie or something like that. And they're going to have to estimate how many they see inside that. What they generally do is count a surface, one layer of the surface, and then count how many layers they see. Use our calculator, which we provide for them, by the way. When you when the children walk into the Zowie estimation, they bring just themselves and we provide pencils and calculators, so they have nothing. The back of the answer sheet is available for, for a blank piece of paper, so no paper is required either. And so they're coming into there and they're trying to decide how many are inside the, the containers. And usually it's going to be a see-through container or opaque. We can still see how many objects are in there on all four sides, including the top. And if there's not, then everybody, has, everybody will have the same thing. So maybe one side might be blocked because of a label or something like that. But generally, they're going to try and figure out the top layer how many they see, and then how many layers they see, and multiply using their calculator. Station three has some boxes, something like a, on the larger side, a Kleenex box, and maybe something in the medium medium range, a toothpaste box, and something in the smaller range, a box of paper clips or staples. And they're going to try and do the length times width times height. And they're going to try to figure out the cubic centimeters for that box. Uh, generally, you're going to want your students to have somewhere on their body, on their hand, without making any marks on the hand with a pencil or marker or pen. And they're going to try, you're going to estimate, they're going to estimate, hopefully, with a small, a medium, and a large parameter or a template. So you'll find one of your students who's good at this as a one, two, or three centimeter finger of somewhere on their, their hand, and then uh, something in between, like from the the top of their middle finger to the bottom, and that's maybe that's 10 centimeters or eight centimeters, and then something like the, the tip of their little finger to, across the span to their thumb might be 20 centimeters, something like that. So they have a large, a medium, and a small template to be able to use. So that this way, when they're using this large box here, they're not taking a finger and going, you know, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, eight. that's too many measurements. You want to have as few measurements across each length as possible. So maybe they have 10, 20, and then they use a little finger for uh, 22, 24, 26, something like that. That's how they would. So you're measuring across each length at least uh, no more than two or three times, hopefully no more than four. Because each time they're measuring, they can be off a little bit. And the more times you measure on each length, the more times you have an uh, ability to have be off a little bit, and that makes a large difference when you finally get to the end and multiply using your calculator. 
uh, any box is available from 100 to uh, 4,000 cubic centimeters is a possibility. And this was uh, toward the, the larger end of that range. A little bit bigger than this is possible, but not much. That pretty much covers size value estimation. And the hard part is practicing and getting good when students um, in the first, second, third, fourth, fifth place range, well, they're looking at uh, 90 percentile, right? So they're getting 90 or 110 grams inside the cup. They're no more than 10% off high or low on the containers and also 10% off at the most on both on the three different boxes that we have available for that day. So uh, I guess what you want to shoot for is about 90% and you know you're doing pretty well. If you're below that, then you can practice some more. At this time, I'll take some questions if you have any. Uh, we have one question in the chat and then um, from a Miss Erin and she's asking, can I please confirm that the measurements are metric? That is correct. Measurements are in metric. It's 100 grams. Uh, the, the number of objects is not metric. It's just number of objects. And of course, in the boxes area, station number three, it's in cubic centimeters. Yes. So the floor is open for questions now from all of our guests. And if you would like, you can uh, raise your hand or you can continue to type it in the chat. You have a little hand icon um, at the top of your screen in the in the meeting window. So you can click that. OK, we have another question from Miss Laura. Okay. She says confirming station three is length times width times height. That is correct. Length times width times height is correct. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Sometimes we'll see, uh, especially on smaller boxes, students are uh, grabbing. You get one side, and they go down, and they go back across again. So they make sure they understand that they're probably going to have three measure, three different measurements on each box. Once in a while, you might get something that's cubed or square on one side, which we might be close to the same. Uh, two of the measurements might be the same, but that's not very often. Most often, it's going to be three different numbers multiply together so make sure that they don't try to do the same side twice okay we have another question from uh miss lisa she had raised her hand lisa you can unmute yourself and you can go ahead and ask it thank you i put it in the chat also once i figured out how to get there i just wondered how students uh move through the stations Okay. They come into the room, they, they, everyone comes to station one first, the buckets with the uh, inside of it that they have to give 100 grams for. And then after that, they have a choice to go to station two or station three, and uh, think how crowded it is at each station. So they, that's the, and then after that, they can, if they make a mistake, which has happened occasionally, we have students working on the containers and they're doing length time, width time, height, and then they get to station three, notice these are the boxes in front of them, they go, wait a minute. <laughs> they run back. Can we go back to station two? I tell them, yes, you can. The only thing you can't do is come back to station one and ask for your cut back. Once you've turned it in, you're done with station one. But station two and three, they, they move back and forth. They have uh, 30 minutes for the, uh, the time that they're allowed to be in there. They can use the whole 30 minutes up. We have some students <clears throat> who are done in 15. It doesn't mean they've done really well. That means they were fast. And then uh, those students who are very good and take up the, the very last second, uh, they could be calculate two and three, four times before they turn their paper in. So either one is correct. OK, so they're not uh, they're not time. Once they get in the room, they're not at station one for 10 minutes. Then you ring a bell and they're a station They're They're free to move around. Correct. The station one, usually we, we you know, if someone's stuck on station one for for 12, 13, 14 minutes. We're going to try to ha have them move along because they're going to run out of time because there's three calculations at each station two and station three. Only the cup is what well, happens at station one. So that's generally uh, two or three or four or five minutes at the most, but they're able, they're able to do that if they want to. It's just that they're limiting the time on station two and three if they okay. stay at station one for a long, long time. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay, we have a couple more questions. One is from um, Mr. Jason Reynolds. It says, for station one, is the weight of the cup included in the 100 grams? No, it's not. You need to, to work with your students so that they know what 100 grams feels like inside of different materials, plastic bag, 
inside of a cup because the cup is not part of the 100 grams, no. Okay, we have another question from um, Aaron. It said, what is the total amount of time allowed? Uh, you have 30 minutes from the time they walk in to the time they walk out. Uh, if the event happens, it starts at 1 o'clock, then they're done at 1.30. Okay, currently that is all of the questions. So we, um, we're we still accepting questions if anybody has anything else. If you're not sure how to use the raise your hand button, you can actually just unmute your microphone if you need and you can, you can yeah. ask. Oh, we have, we have a hand here. Hang on, let me find that. Uh, Mr. Josh. You can go ahead and unmute yourself and you can ask the question. So on station two, I know we just kind of went over everything all real quick, but I'm trying to write it all down now. I've, <laughs> it took me a second. I just kind of want to go over station two again with, since we already did the other ones. Um, well, okay. Everything's, it says, uh, I, what did I get wrote down? We got to look at different layers of the estimate inside of a jar. Let's say it could be a jar, could be it could be a cylinder, could be, usually it's a rectangular or square in shape. The containers that we're using, and uh, or it could be a cup, the plastic with a plastic cellophane over the top or a saran wrap, with a little band around the top so that these can't fall out. And so let's suppose we're using elbow macaroni, for example, and you count the surface of this uh, cup. Maybe it's a uh, the cup is 10 inches tall. Doesn't matter how tall it is, but it would say it is 10 inches tall. And the surface area, where the one you see is one layer, the students count, and they count 50 El macaroni. Now they go on the side of the cup, and they say, I, that, that 50 was this first layer. And they kind of use a, a, you know, kind of say that's one layer, and they count how many layers they think they see. Suppose they say they see 10 layers of that um, El macaroni. That would be 10 times 50, so they're going to give an estimate of about 500 for that, uh, that cup of El macaroni. All right. Thank you. Yep. If it was a rectangular shape, same thing. You're still going to count this. That's why it doesn't matter what the shape of the container is, as you're going to count the surface area, surface, the top layer, and how many layers you think you see, and multiply. There's no formula for people trying to, especially if I put it in a cylinder, they were trying to use a volume of a cylinder um, to be able to work with the kids with, a, with that uh, formula. That doesn't work. It's, it's not. It's not. Not volume. It's how many objects are in the volume. All right, we have a, another question from a Miss Laura. Uh, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and you can ask. I actually have just have two quick questions. Um, is the calculator provided or do we bring our own? Yes, pencils and calculators are provided and if the back of the answer sheet is available for, for an empty sheet of paper so they can do some calculations. The students come in, they don't bring anything with them, but just their, just their knowledge. Wonderful. And do they find out how they, I'm a first timer, um, so do they find out how they did at the event or is that something that we find out afterwards? I find out how they did it if there's a uh, awards ceremony at the end of our uh, program, uh, not at the actual uh, sub estimation, but later on. And then also on the website, uh, a couple of days later, two or three days later, the, all the information will be available uh, posted online as well as how well everybody did. Great, thanks. Okay, we have another question from Olga. She's uh, asking, are there practice tournaments and what would they look like? Practice tournaments, uh, yes, there are three of them, I believe, and they look pretty much the same as what the, it's gonna be happening at the regional tournament as well. Identical, we come in, work on station one, stuff in a bucket, station two, objects in a container, and station three, cubic centimeters, uh, volume for three different boxes. OK, and then we have another question in the chat. It says, any chance there is a list of sample activities we could use as practice as we plan our practice sessions? There's stuff online. I understand uh, that uh, this is uh, people have posted some things online to be able to practice, but it's generally just, you know, finding stuff to be able to practice with, like lima beans, um, peas, lentils, um, pennies, nickels, dimes, paper clips. And nuts and bolts, things like that. Lots of different kinds of pasta. Any pasta you can find, from the tiniest little orzo pasta to large, uh, swirly, twisted types of pasta, are uh, what you want to use for both station one and station two in containers. And boxes, of course, you just find boxes around your house of staples or pepper clip, 
boxes, uh, Kleenex boxes of different sizes, uh, toothpaste boxes, um, you name it, anything that comes in a box that's not too small or too big, that uh, will work for practicing. Okay, uh, we have another uh, uh, hand raised uh, from Miss Lisa. Lisa, you may unmute yourself and ask your question. Thank you. I have two questions. Um, the first one is the answer sheet. Is it a zip grade or is it something that you created um, for the to put the answers on? The answer sheets have been uh, will be pre pre made and I usually have the students' names on them too, if possible. Okay. And so yes, we already have it. it's a, a fill in the blank type of thing. They write on the actual answer sheet. It's not a zip grade, no. Okay. All right. And then um, can they pick like say station two and three? They can pick up and touch. Um, you know, they can pick up the visual estimation container and touch it or no. Uh, station three, they may pick them up and move around much as they want. Station two, they may move it around on the actual table. But because these containers are usually uh, rubber band with a saran wrap on the top, we can't turn it upside down because otherwise we have pasta everywhere. Right. They can't pick okay. up station two containers, but they may manipulate them and they can touch the surface with a, with a eraser. Oh. We try to ask them not to use their point of their pencil and poke holes in the saran wrap. But other than that, yeah. they may move it around and you know twist it around and, and see the different different sides of the container, but they can't pick them up. Okay. Station two, station okay. three, yes, they can pick them up. Okay, thank you. No problem. Okay, as of right now, that appears to be all of our questions. Um, does anybody have any other questions they would like to ask before we end our meeting today? Don't forget, you can always go online to Macomb Science Olympiad and post a question there on, Google, on FAQs for going to ask questions and they'll come back to me and I will answer that also online. Okay. Um, uh, you are getting uh, a lot of thank yous. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Mike. This was very helpful. Thank you. Very you're nice even getting time. you're getting some applause. <laughs> um, hang on, let's see here. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. OK, uh, it appears that everybody is satisfied. They have asked their questions. They're all saying thank you. Happy practicing.